giving you a voice, and making it loud our own way. Welcome, Welcome to, to the fun. fun. But we're going to move into our decade breakdown. So for our last fun analysis of the year, we're going to ask for live audience help with voting. So make sure you're logged in and ready to cast a vote as we break down uh, which game was better. So we're going to do this bracket style. Our um, producer Tyler has got us all set up and randomized the years. Both PJ and I will cast a vote and the audience will cast a third vote to determine who moves on. So if you're on a computer, uh, make sure you vote. Click Twitch Picks. Click that icon on the screen and it'll expand to cast your vote. And if the tournament moves on, more will be available. So Tyler, um, why don't you tell us what we're doing? Yeah, and this is new for us guys, so bear with us because here's some weird uh, gremlins happening in my computer right now. So uh, for some reason, uh, uh, random keys are being pressed. So if somebody hacked my computer, please stop. You know. Uh, but with that said, uh, we're going to do the best we can uh, for this, uh, but we're going to be comparing uh, games from uh, different years. So we're going to start with 2010, and you can argue if uh, – 2010 is actually part of the decade or not, because technically it's not right. Uh, yeah. But that's so what we're going to do, though, is a play in for that between 2010 and 2011. But we're going to break down a bracket uh, with the quarterfinals. Uh, I'm not going to show the bracket on the screen, but what we're going to do, I'll actually uh, switch over here, is that we're going oh, to. Jesus, this is the match you have to show. <laughs> it's, it's just the Einstein finals matches. Yeah, th- I have a feeling this whole bracket is just going to be 11, 14 losing montage. No, sometimes but, yeah. it's 20, 56 too. Oh, great. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> it's, it's Canadian. It's Canadians losing the world champions. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh. <laughs> uh, so, so the way that, that it's going to work is we're going to start out with uh, 2010 versus 2011. Uh, if you have the screen up, uh, if you are on a desktop, I know it works for sure. Uh, you should be able to uh, start casting your votes right now and, and see the other one. So it's going to start out with, uh, 2010 versus uh, 2011, 2013 versus 2015, and around as I said, they all go away. 2016 versus 2018, and 2012 versus 2017, and then uh, 2014 will play the winner of 2010 or 2011. So that's that's kind of somebody who's asking about that because we don't know the winner uh, yet for something like this. All and right. I'm I'm hoping right. I can see the results because for some weird reason I can't see the results all of a sudden on my page. So I might need. Some... Well, as you figure that out. Oh no, I got yeah. it now. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. So, PJ, yeah. give us your quick impression of these two games and which one you want to. Move. Um, I'm gonna come straight out and say I'm gonna be biased in this one. 2010 was my senior year, so the robot I built that year was my baby. Um, and I love that game for a lot of reasons. Uh, I love the strate- the strategy of the three different zones. I love some of the designs that came out of it. So I'm gonna go 2010. Uh, for me, I, okay. So I thought this was the era where first had really good games, but they also had the games would always have like some sort of stupid critical flaw mm-hmm. and 2010, the scoring system was, it, it wins and losses didn't matter. It yeah. was your, your score plus your opponent's score times two. So like it encouraged six on nuns and stuff. I hated that. That was so bad. But the 2011, I hated the mini bots and like the mini bots were just like this Ah, oh, it was it, yeah, it was not good. Su- mini box sucked like, because it was the uh, FTC parts you had to use. That was, that's what well, really made it crap. Well, not just that; it was also like it was expensive and it was overpowering and over kind of overwhelmed what was a, a normally cool game. So mm-hmm. I did love 2010 because like, you had some creative designs, like 469's beautiful cycling machine. But um, the 2010 qualification round stuff and the 6BO stuff was so annoying. So I'm going to vote. I'm going to vote 2011. So we need the audience to break the tie for us. All right. So the the audience already has, and <laughs> uh, with 16 votes to seven, they voted for 2011. So 2011 is going to move on, uh, and they're going to play 2014 in just a little bit. So we'll reset everybody here and go through. Uh, I just gotta. I gotta ask. So we're showing 2010 right now, right? Um, Karthik or, or PJ, can you talk a little about uh, 469's robot that year and just like just how? crazy and borderline was, rule breaking that was well i mean it, it was it, it it was like a chokehold basically what they would do is they would lock themselves into the tower so they couldn't move and they would basically catch all the balls that they were being cycled back into play and balls were cycled back in from your own side of the field so once you scored they could build a cycle where the balls would just be scored over and over and over again and they were it was just a work of art because it was so hard to do create what they did and make it all fit and make sure that they couldn't get pushed out of the tower. And it was just, it was, even though uh, they didn't win the championship that year, I think uh, it's one of the three greatest robots of all time in FRC history. And 
there's no reason they shouldn't have won the world championship. There was other, <laughs> that's a whole discussion for another day, but it's, I, I, I'm not going to say anything. Yeah. I was saying that's why, <laughs> but it's what I loved about it was the first time I saw it was, I want to say Michigan state championship. No, Troy, Troy district was the first time I saw it in person, which was their second event. So that was their second event. So everybody at the event had already heard of it. So everybody went to their piss to see it. And it was all folded up at the start of the match. Cause it had yep. to start within their bumper, their frame perimeter and everything. And so I was looking at it and like, I was like, how's that, how's, how's that quite work? Cause you couldn't get, you couldn't get close to their pit number one. Cause everybody was trying to see the robot. And then I see their first match and it just all like folds out in this like amazing. I was like, Oh, that's how that works. And it was just, it was, if they could get their cycles going, it was game over. Like there was, you had a, it was like some other years where you had a very short time to get ahead of them and you could defend them if done very, very correctly. But it was, yeah, they were, I, I mean, like I consider that robot, like the 2007 New England Patriots, who I consider to be one of the greatest NFL teams of all time, but they just, they lost in the finals. And I think that's the same deal with 469 that year. So, <laughs> All right, we know that 2011 is moving on, so let's jump over to our next matchup, which, oh, well, this will be interesting. <laughs> 20, 2013 Ultimate that, Ascent and 2015 Recycle Rush. PJ, take us away. This what might be think? the number eight seed playing here in Recycle Rush. <laughs> this is number eight seed versus the number one seed. Uh, but it's uh, 20, I, I, I'm going to go 2013. Uh, it was one of the few games where I think it had it had everything. It had a little bit of everything and nothing was every, all the points seemed pretty balanced for how hard it was to do everything. Like a, th like a third level climb wasn't worth too much or too little. It was, I feel like it was an appropriate amount of points. I can't remember off the top of my head what it was, but for how easy it was to score large volumes of Frisbees easy with quotes. But um, so, and then nobody could really do everything. I like a game where one robot can't do everything. Um, there was, you know, one or two exceptions I could probably think of, but for the most part, I think 2013, just everything, it was one of the more bad tech fouls and fouls weren't a stupid amount of points that added too much, if I remember correctly, but it was like, I think it was a very balanced game. Some really cool robots came out of it. So I go 2013 in a second. Yeah, I go, I, I go 2013 easily on this one. PJ touched on all the points, but I just thought that was the coolest strategic design challenge. There were so many different options. It was hard to say what was right. There was different strategy being played, and like those high, those frisbees flying across the field at high speed were so so cool. It was just like it was awesome to see. And as much as I, I've made my arguments for 2013, <laughs> but honestly, I think 2013 is the best game that FRCs um, ever had. And so I, uh, you know, and I, I mean, I tried to emulate this game multiple times in FR in BRC game design uh, because I just I thought it was that good. It was. It was beautiful. So, a 2013 easy vote. We don't need to spend too much time talking about it here. You know, the those, audience... frisbees, those frisbees were the best until one took you in the neck while you were roughing. <laughs> Literally, one ricocheted out the field, took me right in the neck. I had to sit I, out for a minute. I've told the story on the show before, but like <laughs> I, we almost saw the end of the first robotics competition in 2013 because I was at the Finger Lakes event, and there was this one team. They were full court shooting. Um, I forget which team it was. I think it's actually uh, 30. It might have been 3015, but and one of their shots went around the netty so it's like out there mm -hmm. in the in the audience and there's a woman holding a baby and right as the frisbee comes by she turns and the frisbee just missed the baby and i was like <laughs> oh my goodness that was the end that was the end for that baby for for lawsuit it, it was just like uh, oh 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 my god it was terrifying so uh yeah but it was still my favorite game. And Tyler, what did the audience think? Yeah, dominating for the uh, uh, 2013 game, uh, no doubt. I also, Karthik, I do want to point out, to be fair, that I am showing uh, the team that I was on losing in the 2015 game in this as well, too. Oh, okay. So that's, that's good. Good. So good. now, now we're team. just a bunch of losers, you know? My <laughs> team hasn't made Einstein since 2007. That's the only time we made Einstein, and we got red carded out of, out of Einstein. So. Oh, yeah, that was interesting. So that's <laughs> – PJ, we can talk about that on the show about the previous decade, okay? Okay, sorry. <laughs> sorry I'm too old for this show. <laughs> what does that make me? <laughs> All right. Older. Yeah, so Tyler, you said the 2013 took this one? Yep, 2013 took this one. By the way, I'm having, just, just a, as a side producer note, my keyboard is pretty much non-functional right now for some weird reason, so we'll get through the quarters, and then we're going to just have to have the audience uh, type in the chat how they feel. So 
Okay. Okay. We'll impromptu vote. All right. Yeah. So next up, we've got 2012 Rebound Rumble versus 2017's first Steamworks. Uh, PJ, I'm going to keep giving you first uh, opinion. Oh, let's see. I didn't like Steamworks for a lot of reasons. I just feel like fuel was undervalued. There was those big airships in the middle that made it really visually hard to see. It was just really disappointing for a lot of ways. Field reset took forever. I mean, and I wasn't a huge fan of 2012 either. Actually, this might, but um, I think I'm going to take 2012 because I liked, I loved 2012's end game. I loved the bridge balancing. Um, I loved some of the robots that came out that year. 1717's 2012 robot. We've, I know we've done, you guys have talked about here before. It's one of my favorite. It's one of the best robots ever. And it's just, I think I'm going to go 2012 just because of my intense dislike for 2017. <laughs> Okay, um, I'm going to go. Uh, I mean, I guess let's just talk about the games individually. Yeah, 2012, yeah. Um, I thought was a cool game. You know, like having a basketball theme was like better than having a theme about I don't know medieval times. So like <laughs> that, that that was cool. But the co-op bridge was just like ah, the co-op yeah. bridge was brutal. So like the it, it's the same with the scoring system in 2010. I just the co-op bridge. Yeah was just infuriating so mm-hmm. that's a definite downer for 2012 steamworks um i thought gear scoring was cool i thought it was a little bit too easy and not visual enough i mm-hmm. thought steamworks played great at the highest levels when teams were getting four rotors and when teams were filling up the boiler but i didn't think steamworks played great at the lower levels especially when teams were struggling to get like two rotors and no fuel was mm-hmm. being scored that being said the, the co-op bridge really broke 2012 for me so i'm going to vote for steamworks 2017 okay <laughs> So this is a really close one here. And with 26 votes to 19 votes, the audience is going to be a tiebreaker. And they went with 2012. So 2012. Oh, rebound Rumble. 2012 moving on into the semifinals. I'm literally just hand drawing a bracket here so I can remember all these now. <laughs> oh, great. Now you're showing footage from Einstein 2012. That was oh, a good hey. Me too. This is the Karthik misery montage. Yeah, let's, no kidding. Let's see, let's see what else we can come up hey, with. This is how Canley speaking started, Karthik. So. <laughs> oh, okay. So uh, for our next matchup. Oh, did I, did I skip one, Tyler? Uh, or did you skip one? No, I might have just skipped one. Okay, so let's go back and do 2016. Okay. First Stronghold versus 2018. First Power Up. Ooh. We'll get those matches loaded in just a moment. So yeah. uh, as Tyler gets those loaded up, um, PJ, your thoughts on those two games? Oh, those are both. I think, let's see, 2016 I liked a lot because I liked, I didn't necessarily like, that was the first, well, I guess not the first, but 2016 was, you know, one, you know, another time where they, they slapped a theme over our faces and just kept hitting us with a theme over and over and over, whether we liked it or not. So Hold on, not... I think we have breaking news in the chat, but apparently Israel was canceled. No, no, that's not that's not what she's talking about. Oh. That's, 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 I know who that is. Israel was not canceled. She's talking about fantasy. Okay, so <laughs> neither the districts nor the nation of Israel have been no. canceled. That's <laughs> what happens when you give Tegan permission to have a keyboard. So okay. I saw that. I saw people so, react. So happy she's going to be one of our new region recap. Hosts. I know that's one of our new region recap. Hosts. Okay, because like remember there was like rumors about Israel this year about like and things like China like... got canceled. So yeah, like... I was oh I was like oh poor Bumbleb and Bumblebee. <laughs> poor Bumbleb. No, so Israel did not get canceled. Tegan just did not clarify what was happening. Cool, cool. Back. To, sorry, I distracted. I no, saw that. Kind of really... a fun training on context and chat. I think. <laughs> yes. I, I, I was really worried. So, first stronghold versus first power up. Anyway, so back to stronghold. You know, they were hitting us over the head with the theme, but I mean, that was whereas power up was a little bit gentler on the theme. I feel like, but um, as for actual gameplay, 2018, as we've talked about a lot on all our recap shows, on analysis, on candidly speaking, a few times, the time-based scoring tended to be a bit broken. Um, as I guess. Um, contradicted by what I talked about earlier tonight in my match, but it was um, usually whoever won in Auton won the match in 2018 uh, for the most part. Like I said, there were exceptions, whereas 2016, there was it was so entertaining, and I feel like there was a lot to go on. Like there was a lot with the defenses, there was low and high goal uh, scoring, there was 330, you know, doing their uh, doing the resurrection um, in Einstein finals. 
Like, there's just a lot of memorable things for me for 2016. I think as a game, I think it had a lot of very good elements, a lot of different things that pieced together really well. And so I'll, I'm going to go 2016. Um, I, I really like both these games. And so remember what I was saying about, like, the era of when first games had, like, a fatal flaw, 2010, yes. 2011, 2012? Uh, I thought these games were both really really well done mm -hmm. and so there's i mean i definitely did not like the theme in 2016 but i do think they got the theme right in terms of how much emphasis they had in 2018 but I, that's really here nor there when it comes mm -hmm. to uh to game, yeah to, to gameplay so i don't even want to focus on that sort of stuff uh i do think that 2016 was just kind of a more fun game to, mm -hmm. to watch um uh, it was a little bit hard to follow from the audience because there was so much happening on either side of the field. You kind of had to pick one side to, at a time to watch, which made it a little bit of a struggle compared to, to Power Up where everything was happening in the center of the field, which I think mm -hmm. makes for a much better game. Oh, 2056 losing, really? <laughs> this is, this I is... told you I have all the highlights. Yeah. To be yeah. fair, in 2013, we got to see two Canada teams win. That, that is true. <laughs> that is true. Um, so... This is really close for me, but I'm going to go with 2016. I just think that it was a little bit more exciting to watch. And uh, the defenses were a cool challenge, even though they really weren't much of a challenge by the end of the match. They were a visual challenge. And I think the high goal scoring made for some interesting play and the dynamics of the one defense robot in the, allowed in the courtyard allowed for some cool stuff there. So, mm -hmm. oh, and there's the microphone. <laughs> the I just had to pick people. that match, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Did you know that microphone was Canadian too? No. <laughs> <laughs> it just breaks out. Very sorry. Yeah, uh, very. and the audience uh, uh, is going to also go with you on stronghold of thirty votes to nineteen, uh, going for first stronghold. So twenty sixteen moves on. Now, here's a little bit of an issue, chat, is that since apparently my keyboard is a potato and, and it doesn't want to work anymore, uh, we're just going to have to kind of uh, say these out loud and take a rough guess from chat uh, <laughs> as you spam. Oh, really fast, guys. Yes. So, uh, oh, so this is how only... American elections work. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> you didn't know that. Democracy <laughs> at its finest. Please only vote once, by the way. That's a great segue, Karthik. But, uh, so uh, our next one is going to be uh, moving on was 2011. Wait, we uh, haven't done it. I feel like we missed a quarter. Final. We we did because 2011 beat oh. 2010 in the play-in, uh, and they are going to go up against 2014. So we're going to bring up uh, these two in just a moment here, and uh, we'll get your opinions. But if you guys want to start talking about them, uh, as I load these up, we'll go from there. Okay, PJ. Nathan also offered if you want him to make a straw poll really fast. Uh Oh, uh, that's fine. We can just take chat for now. Okay. But thanks, Nathan. Appreciate it. Nathan is such a go-getter. <laughs> yeah, it was great. I worked with him this weekend. Really great. Yeah, and I it, like him. Great guy. Um, so between 2011, we talked about already, so I guess I'll focus on 2014. 2014 is arguably my favorite game of all time. Not to ref, but to strategize. <laughs> yeah. And to, yeah, not to ref, but to <laughs> strategize and play. 2014 is arguably my but it's probably my favorite game of all time. Um, it edges out 2013 by a brief margin. I just loved – I love defense. I'm a hard nose, like, you know, the the 80s Bears, your old, your Pittsburgh Steelers of the old days, like your football defense, the Iron Curtain. Like, I am a defensive minded guy. And just seeing 2014 and just the defense and this, the assists and the way people, the death cycles when people would run those, I just feel like it was a, such an entertaining game to watch. It was only one game piece for each alliance. It was very easy to focus on what was happening on either alliance because there was only supposed to be one game piece if you did everything right. But um, so I'm going to go 2014. Right. And by the way, I just want to cut. I'm sorry, everybody. My, my literally my keyboard is like, I think I have a stuck key. And it's just <laughs> totally messing stuff up right now. Uh, so listen to the beautiful voices of PJ and Karthik yeah, <laughs> while we fix this. Okay. So um, with 2014, um, Aerial Assist or Aerial Assault, as uh, people nicknamed it, or maybe that was me who created that nickname. I don't know. <laughs> um, it, it was it was a cool game strategically. You know, six robots, two game pieces. Um you know a lot of it it was the closest game to football in terms of um you know the blocking routines that had to be set um setting picks and just that hard defense uh at championship when the goalie poles started to emerge that was like the coolest dynamic of um the secondary game that people were all hiding all season long and bringing it out um in the finals the the negative was that the refs had such a hard job and there were just so many weird penalties and penalties that weren't balanced well and that created uh some issues even still 
Um, I like this game better than 2011. I thought that 2011. Hey, everybody. Oh. It seems like we're back. And, uh, you know, there's not much going on, on the screen, but maybe you can hear our voices. Yes, yes, they yes. can. Yes. Lovely Lamp can hear us. Great. Okay. So we were talking 2011 versus 2014. Um, I, I was on the 2014 bad we, way. I was on 2014, and I think chat was on chat 2014. Was, and yeah, that was chat was overwhelmingly on 2014. So, sorry, Logomotion. <laughs> so, I think our semifinal matchup is Ultimate Ascent 2013 versus First Stronghold 2016. Yes. Um, okay. I'm going to I'm go. voting 2013 all the way. So, yeah, yeah, we know where you're voting, Karthik. I'm thinking. <laughs> Hope everybody <laughs> knows the videos because there's no way I'm going to be able to bring up new videos right now. Yeah. This is. So, so chat, uh, we're talking 2013 versus 2015, while PJ. I mean, 2016. 2013 versus 2016. I'm going to go 2016 to be a dissenting voice just because, not, not just to be dissenting, but I actually I enjoyed 2016 a lot. Probably got a little bit of bias. I. For those who don't know, I do have a degree in history with a focus on um, medieval European history. So um, the theme was right up my alley. Not that I think it was appropriate for an FRC. <laughs> Not that I necessarily think it was an appropriate theme for yeah. the competition that we were doing. But like, I was like, okay, like I can get behind this a little bit. It was my little like history, my little history major moment to like explain things to STEM people. But <laughs> it was, uh, I think, and I just, I really liked the gameplay at the highest levels. I loved watching the divisions. I thought there was an extra strategic aspect to choosing the defense and things. I know they became relatively standard throughout the end, but I did like the ability to choose the defenses your opponents would face. Like as a strategy mentor that year, it was really interesting because we had huge spreadsheets over who failed the most, who had the most trouble with certain defenses. And it was just super, uh, super detailed from a strategy perspective. So I kind of like that. So I'll go 2016. I'm trying to add up the votes in chat. Yeah. We got like a lot for 2013 and then a lot for 2016 in blocks. Yeah, I think it's 2016, though. I think. Uh, oh, I, wow. oh, wait. Nathan, 1911 for who? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you need to say who it is. 2011 and 2014's not in the race, Nathan. <laughs> oh, no, damn it, Nathan. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, no, Nathan said 2013, I think. It's 2011 in favor. This is Nick, a great way to end the year. Calm down, Nick. Just saying. Oh, look. Uh, so which year won, Nathan? I don't know. Nick seems to think it's 2013. Oh, that that's great. <laughs> he says I missed 2013. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Nathan. Thank you. Nick, 2013 no. moves on. Nick, Nick, who are you voting for? <laughs> yeah, this is how Nick gets kicked out of group chats. Okay. <laughs> or the first Inspires channel. <laughs> Either he one. Get banned, did he get banned from there? No, but his, okay. a couple of his messages got deleted when he used, uh, I think, when he used fun emotes. So. <laughs> <laughs> now, now that we're advocating to do that, but go ahead and do that, please. Just go spam it. <laughs> Not that we're advocating, but go do it. Yeah. Nick, we love you. Okay. All right, so, so, now, 20, so 2013 moves on. <laughs> okay, right. so, that was so 2013 moves on to the finals. So then we've got 2014 versus. So this is 2012. 2014 versus 2012. Um, oh, I'm. Oh, PJ, you can vote first this time. I'm going to go 2014 again, uh, just for all the reasons I said before. I can't think of anything else to add. And like we, like I said, 2012 won, but I wasn't a super big fan of it when I voted for it in the first place. So, but I'm a huge proponent of 2014. So. Yeah, I, I didn't even vote for 2012 in the first round, so yeah. I'm not voting for him this time. 2014, Aerial Assault, let's do it. I love Aerial Assault. Nathan, please don't double vote. Makes my unofficial job hard. <laughs> <laughs> we appreciate you, Nathan, though. All right, I think most are saying uh, yeah. 2014. I see like, I see like, like two huh? 2012s and a lot of 2014s. All right, that means it's coming down to the end. All right. So 2013 DJ. versus 2014, is that all right? DJ, make your make your compassion case for uh, 2014. For 2014, because you know that's my that is actually my vote. Yeah, my, my compassion case for 2014. So 2014, I just think it was, it was. I like a game where people have designated. I like a game with a, a designated flow pattern. I like a game where disruptions in that flow pattern through unique strategies can cause upsets and crazy things to happen. I like a game 
where you can't win it on your own. I like a game that relies work. Like, I mean, yes, you couldn't, you couldn't win 2013 by yourself, but you could more so than in 2014. Like you needed to be doing those assist cycles. Um, so I just liked that it took your entire alliance to make 2014 work. Cause if you just, you needed all three robots playing defense, switching between defense and offense. Otherwise you weren't going to win because you needed every, in the highest levels, you needed everybody on the, on their game the entire time. So there's my, my 24, 2014 pitch. Uh, I am voting for 2013. I love the strategic balance of the game where you had, you know, um, ground intake robots versus climbing robots versus full court shooters, or you had combinations of the two. The full court shooting that year, that was the first game we ever had teams scoring from the opposite side of the field. And that was just like a total paradigm shift. Mm -hmm. um, it really showed the power of the current motors that were in the kit. And with the Vex Pro cop parts that come out, came out that year, it really made for some unique sort of stuff. Um, the fact that the championship was won by three cycling robots, so forget about these full court shooters, forget about the hangers and stuff, like that all kind of went away and just showed how balanced that game was. And I think if you replay that championship 15 times, we might've seen five different styles win different alliances. It was so, it, it was intense. And just that visual, those Frisbees just going at full speed. And like the different matches you saw, like how cool it was when you would see um, like 67 load up with the player station and just fire disc after disc after disc. Or when you would see, you know, um, 1114 or 254 scaling that pyramid, just whoosh, like flying there through the air almost, or 2056 with their seven disc auto, 118 with their seven disc auto. And it was just, um, it was just a glorious game. Like I love the game so much. That was the best set of robot diversity we had. So Mm -hmm. hey, I'm just going to ask Nathan, make us, if you don't mind for this one, make a straw poll and we'll take, we'll get a full audience vote. We'll, we'll make this one official. Cause yeah. like, uh, it has been going back and forth. It's I've been trying to keep or, track. Or Nick cousins is just spamming the chat. And because no, I I've, forgot I've, I've only for some him. act of God, I made him a mod and I can't put him in slow mode. <laughs> but I liked what I liked. I think about 2014. One thing I liked just cause we can keep arguing while we get that straw poll. Up, yeah. Yeah. Was I liked that it wasn't necessarily the the closer or the scoring robot that was there you go. Straw pulls the up, most by the important way. part of that alliance. I would argue the mid zone player was your most key part of that alliance. So that's a departure from most games where the one scoring is the most important. Whereas 2014, it was that mid zone because they were the most offensive defensive hybrid robot. Oh, I'm sorry, PJ. I'm watching the straw poll and it's just like back and forth, back and forth. <laughs> I didn't realize they had visuals on this thing. This is like watching yeah. like the New York Times of the election night. It's like this, the this, needle. This just this just got it's like it was it we're at nineteen to eight nineteen nineteen? Yeah. Twenty nineteen. I'll see if I can bring it in so people can see it. This is it's close. I think we're we're oh uh, we're <laughs> Nick, twenty thirteen or twenty fourteen, maybe the best of the decade, but we all know two thousand nine is the best all time. Oh, he's really gonna get banned now. <laughs> like <laughs> Ban Hammer. All right, I'll, I'll put up the straw poll here so we can see the uh results uh between it, everything. It looks like it's about it's about settled. For some reason my screen is now transitioning at like five seconds. So. <laughs> I keep forgetting we're back on air. I'm leaning back in my chair like a douchebag. Like, <laughs> sorry. You wouldn't want to look unprofessional like that, Karthik. <laughs> <laughs> ah, ah, I'll do my Kawhi Leonard laugh. Ah. <laughs> All right. Yeah, it looks like um, nobody nobody's voted in, a, in about a minute or so. So I think we've. Uh... So so where was it? So Karthik, were you 2013 or 2014? I was 2013. So, so you were 2013. Not... PJ, you were 2014. Yep. All right. So there are two votes right now separating the greatest FRC game of the decade. Let's give it a few more seconds. And while we're doing that, why don't we start our, our giveaway here? Uh, oh, and I'm yes. sorry because I'm not going to be able to bring it back up because of all the ridiculous issues and gremlins that we're having tonight. But it is going to be for the awesome uh, set of Bat Hawks uh, from Team 1720, uh, Fixed Gears. Make sure you check it out at anymark.com if you're interested uh, in that. And with that said, uh, the keyword uh, for the giveaway, once I get it going, actually, I don't have the show doc up. What is the keyword for tonight? Yeah, I got um, it right, buddy. It is I don't Voyager. Know. Oh. Because it's deep space related. 
<laughs> Voyager. I'm hoping Voyager for the giveaway, this. guys. Type yep. Voyager in chat. All right, yeah. So type Voyager in chat if you want to be entered in for the giveaway. Uh, subs do get 5x chance to win. If you're a uh, Twitch Prime subscriber or if you have Twitch Prime or Amazon Prime, you can do so for free. Uh, once again, Voyager will get you in uh, for the keyword. So good luck, everybody, and we'll uh, draw in a few minutes. All right, it looks like voting has stabilized with a one vote difference. Oh, the winner wow. is 2013, 24 to 23 wow. as the greatest game. I didn't think it would be that close. Highly contested with 2014. So uh, thanks, everyone, for tuning in. Thanks for uh, listening to us chat about these old games. It's always yeah. fun to do. Um, so that's going to be it for Funalysis this week. Tyler, tell us who donated and subscribed during our live stream. Do you have access uh, to that info? <laughs> <laughs> Let's see if I can bring that up here. Uh, I know Care, I know see, Care Tangent I, donated bits. I know Sia. Uh, I, I got it. 166. On. Okay. I was now, just magically, my keyboard is starting to work like now that the show's ending. So I don't yeah. know how the hell that works. But uh, we'll get this up here in a second. I'll be able to tell. But I do want to say, for those of you who are donating towards a new keyboard, luckily I still have a couple of those Cooler Master keyboards left over. <laughs> so I'm actually going to use one of them uh, uh, for this as well. So, all right, let's read off uh, who's who's donated since the uh, uh, last room that we had. Matt1511 with the Tier 1 sub. User Daniel with the Tier 1 sub. Uh, Big Spuns with the Tier 1 sub. Elliot18, Tier 1 sub. Great Phantom Delta, 15 months of support with the sub. Thank you. Uh, Dark Zack, five months in a row. Welcome back, buddy. Uh, Kirtan Jack, 5,000 bits, as we said before. Incredible. Uh, BTM225 with the Tier 1 sub. Grumpback Whale, five months of support. CP Apple Family with the Tier 1 sub. CMC Bride166, 16 months in a row, buddy. Thank you so much. Chavintech with the Tier 1 sub. Uh, Ryan, welcome back uh, with a Tier 1 sub. C. McBride, 166, 2,000 bits, says, this has helped Tyler get a new computer. Apparently, I just need a whole new computer. <laughs> this is a whole uh, new thing. Throw out yeah, the whole now, computer. So. Uh, Ishano, 45, with uh, four months of support in a row. And Inkling, 6, just subscribing now, says, uh, for three months in a row, says, 2012 without co-op or 2014 without stupid penalties would both be perfect <laughs> games. Guys, what are your thoughts on that? Yeah. That, yeah. yeah. Yes. <laughs> That's you, you pull tw you pull co-op out of 2012 and you play that game again with the current um, capabilities of um, the COTS parts and mm -hmm. where robots have advanced to, it'd be so good. Um, maybe even change the ball limit, up that a little bit to get mm -hmm. some more balls in there. Yeah. But yeah, yeah, polls closed, some... guys, by the way. I just want to say, if you're VPN voting, the poll is closed. And C. McBride, I'm sorry. Stress has made me revert back to your old uh, name. So <laughs> I'll call CMC Bride again. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this is a great show, guys, and a great way to uh, round out our FRC for 2018. This is exactly how I envisioned it. So <laughs> This thank... was the dream, guys. Yes. Yeah. So well, thank you, everybody. And so, I mean, that that is it for analysis for um, the 2018 year. It's been a really great year. I'm going all the way back to kickoff. Um, you know, break, Mason, Nick, and I breaking down the game. We had a lot of fun doing that and just seeing how strategies advanced doing the MCC stuff. We hope to do all that stuff again this year, um, breaking down um, Deep Space Voyager. Um, what's the game na game name again? Deep Space? Deep Space. Deep Space. Destination and Deep Space. Destination oh, Deep Space. <laughs> yes. And so we'll talk about that. So for... it's going to be um a really good time i'm uh first has put out a lot of good games recently and i predict that they're going to put out another good game in just a few weeks so we'll be here breaking it all down for you from start to finish all the way down to the detroit championship iri and beyond thank you to all of our co-executive producers keeping fun loud live and independent pledge your support at patreon.com forward slash first updates now